Welcome, welcome, everybody. Now, I know I'm not a sea captain, I do apologize. Uh, are we all in? Can we all hear me? Greetings. I can see Tom, Matthew, yeah, Jack, Giles, uh, Stephanie, Jaya, lovely. Thank you for joining us. Um, Hello everybody. So I'm Peter, Peter Baker, um, part of Sharp Teeth, and uh, we have been working recently with Telepresence, um, Telepresence Stage, uh, who have been researching effective and affordable techniques to connect theatre and dance performers from their separate homes and place them within virtual sets online to interact and perform together. And uh, we are all calling in from different places. I'm currently in London. We have one of our performers is in Bristol. Our other performer is in another part of London and our tech is also in another part of London. Now, um, we've been looking at various ways of both interacting together as units and also with the audience. And one of those ways is possible if you decide you want to use a green screen background like I've just done here. If you would like to participate in this and to potentially see yourself on screen, uh, Chloe has helpfully shared a link where you can download a green screen, which you can easily add to your background if you so wish. And you can easily do that by going in your Zoom settings and clicking on backgrounds and filters. And as Chloe says there, you click the plus button if you do want to add this as a background. One final note is that we will be recording this session. Um, so uh, if you're not fine with that, do feel free to have your camera off if you'd rather not be seen or preserved for posterity. I see that Jack has a lovely green screen background there. So without further ado, I am going to hand over to our Captain El Chateau, who will have some rather important news to impart to us all. Thank you very much. Oh, welcome detectives. Come on in, come on in. Sorry, it's just a bit choppy seas on the Antarctic Ocean. Uh, Detective Peter, is that you through the porthole? Yes, sorry. You're right out there. You got a bit of a dicky tummy? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, just make sure that you aim over the ship. All right, and then come back in when you're ready. Maybe one too many sherries for Detective Peter last night, detectives. Now, I know we've all been having fun on this 1929 Detective Booze Cruise. And I know that some of us are still a bit squiffy from last night, eh, Detective Peter? But I'm afraid, detectives, we have some very important work to do. Now, I know you know who I am. Captain L. Charteau, the life and soul of the party, and captain of the good ship Sensational. And I'd like to welcome you into my private captain's quarters and my lounge here. The reason I have done so, Detective, is that I have some very important news. You see, this morning, I received a radio call saying that we needed to come to the aid of an expedition base camp just on the shores here of Antarctica. When I arrived, detectives, the situation was far worse than I could have ever imagined. You see, I discovered that the famous explorer, Admiral Albert Ross, has been murdered. <gasps> <gasps> I know. Exactly, Detective Peter. Yes, he was murdered. I saw his cold, cold <laughs> corpse this morning's detectives. So I need your help to find out who done it. Now, sort of fortunately, there's only three crew members left on this expedition. So I shall take a seat in my armchair. There we are. And I will introduce you to the three remaining crew members who are now, of course, our three suspects. The first is Doug's body. Is the camp cook. Cleaner, quartermaster, HR specialist, dentist, and fun captain. There he is. Now, this Doug's body is no stranger to Antarctic expeditions, detectives. No, he was with Admiral Albert Ross on his first expedition 20 years ago 
on, strangely, the very same site that this expedition currently is. There he is, Doug's body. Now, next up, we have Norwegian cartographer, Doug, uh, no, Getcha Berry. There he is, rather pathetic looking chap, Getcha. He's very young and afraid of snow. So you might be thinking, what is he doing on a snowy expedition in Antarctica? Well, he is actually a member of the famous Bearings family who co-funded this expedition, so that might answer your question, Detective. And finally, we have the Welsh zoologist, Penelope Wynn. Oh, what a fine figure of a lady she is. Rawr. But Penelope is not just a pretty face, no. She is a very intelligent Cambridge graduate who is the zoologist on this expedition. This is her first expedition to boot. So there we have it, Detective. Those are our suspects. Now, let's all grab our coats and I'll take you to the base camp. Off we go. Excuse the mess. Sorry about my room. Not a lot of space in here. Gosh, I wasn't expecting to have people back, but, uh, oh, just found my coat. Sorry. Goodness me, Detective, were you a bit squiffy-eyed there from all the booze last night? Now, everybody wrapped up warm? Let's get you to the expedition base camp. <laughs> Goodness me! I told you it was chilly, detectives. But here we are, just outside the radio tower, where we can see the expedition base camp just yonder. Now, I have divided each of the suspects, and they are waiting for questioning by you in their each individual rooms. We have Penelope Gwynn there, in her room. In the next door, we have Getcha Bearings in his room, and Doug's body is in the kitchen there. Now, the body of Admiral Albert Ross is just outside where we are now, in the radio tower. Now, you'll see, detectives, that there's a big black cavernous tunnel running through this map, and that is from where the ice sheet broke in two last month taking all of the camp's rations with it. So, these four crew members, they've been starving for the past month, detective, so it's probably why tempers have been running quite high, why the food has been running quite low. I knew about this, of course, because I got a radio call this morning from a Getcha Bearings. You'll be able to see him now in the radio tower. Oh my goodness, please, come and help us, please, we are so starving, hungry, oh my goodness, the ice shelf broke several weeks ago, and our captain, at all costs, we won't do anything to help us, he is so ill and turning yellow, I don't know what is wrong with him, you have to come quickly, before something bad happens, like, somebody gets killed, or, and come quickly I did, detectives, come quickly I did, but Getcha was quite right, something bad did happen, I was too late to stop that, I thought that they were all going to be very pleased when I arrived, detectives, with food and provisions, but when I arrived, I arrived to the most grave sea, which was this. I arrived to what appeared to be a snowman by the broadcast tower, but on closer inspection I discovered that this was no snowman, detectives, but a man covered in snow, quite a lot of snow, it turns out, and that man was Admiral Albert Ross himself. What was he doing at the radio tower, detectives? I know he was quite a proud man. Maybe he had come to cancel our coming. Maybe someone beat him to it. I don't know. On closer inspection, I could see that there was a, a mark around his neck, like he'd been strangled around the neck. 
And then I saw his face. Yes, Getcha was right. He does look quite ill. Sullen, yellow, jaundiced. Not the fine figure of a man that you know from the photographs, no. Admiral Albert Ross had been ill for some time. I looked around the room to see if I could find some more evidence. Ah, yes, I did find more evidence. I found a hip flask on the floor. Didn't smell of alcohol, detectives, no. Something very fishy about this, detectives. So, there we are. Those are all the clues I can give you, detectives. I have my own theories about what might have happened that I'll share with you now as to how Ross might have been killed. What could have happened, detectives, is someone crept in whilst he was cancelling the help and they could have strangled him around the neck. <laughs> <laughs> But what could they have used to strangle him, detectives? Maybe a rope, or a necklace, or some sort of belt. Or maybe it was the wire from the radio itself. Who knows? But maybe the strangulation was just a ruse, and he was actually killed by something else. Maybe a handkerchief covered in some sort of smelling salt that was so strong it would have killed him. Oh, oh my goodness, it stinks! It stinks! Get off of me! Get off of me! Or maybe it's something not so obvious, detectives. Maybe it was a tiny boat that pecked him to death. Oh, oh my goodness! But we shared such lovely bath times together! Ah! Could have been a tiny little puppet that tickled him to death. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Or maybe somebody used a fake hand to bludgeon him to death. <sighs> Oh, God, his fake hand! Help! Obviously, detectives, these suggestions are all nonsense. But my point is to look outside of the box. Maybe the obvious choice isn't the right choice. But I trust you, detectives. Shortly, I'll divide you into your detective teams, where you will have five minutes to interview each one of the suspects. Then we will return to the private lounge where I will be able to hear your theories and find out who you think done it. Good luck, detectives. I believe in you. Ah, detectives. Uh, <clears throat> lovely to see you. My name's Doug, Doug's body. Uh, I'm the camp cook, carpenter, HR specialist, hairdresser, everything around here. Um, so please listen, Albert was one of my best friends. Any way I can help, I will answer your questions. Have you got any questions for me, detectives? Did you kill Albert Ross? <laughs> I have never heard such poppycock in my life. Albert Ross was my best friend and boss for the last 30 years. I've been on every expedition that he's been on. I've planned them, I've executed them, I've, I've got all the sailors, I've basically done all the work for him. So uh, who do you think might have killed him? Well, I'll tell you who I think might have killed him. Get your bearings. I mean, he could kill anyone on this camp with his breath. I'd know, I have to sleep next to him. Are you in love with Getcha then? Are you having a relationship? A relationship with Getcha Bearings? <laughs> no, no, no. The only person I'm pumping on this base is uh, Albert Ross's wife, Bella de Ball. <laughs> oh. Um, detective, sorry. Uh, you, you didn't hear that, all right? You, you didn't hear that, please. Go and talk to some detectives, please. Hmm, very suspicious. Oh, detectives. Ah, uh, right. 
my name's Pen Gwen. Uh, I'm the zoologist. Uh, it's terrible what happened to Ross, isn't it? But but I have to say, detectives, I I'm not that surprised. <laughs> Why not? Why are you not surprised? Yes, good question, detective. Why wasn't I surprised? Well, he's been acting very odd of late, very angry, rubbing people up the wrong way. You know, I, I think he's been losing his mind. I, I don't know, but I think Doug might be trying to poison him, detectives. He keeps giving him cod liver oil, but it only seems to be making him worse. Uh, well, I don't know. And, and there's Getcher, detectives. Getcher's been acting very odd of late around him, very tetchy. You know, I, I, I don't know, detectives, but I get the impression that I think Getcher thinks that he's Admiral Albert Ross's son. I mean, if he was, well, that'd be reason to kill him because Albert Ross hates his guts. Must be well, terrible. You weren't you angry about um, Albert Ross cancelling the help when you were all starving? Yes, of course. We were all absolutely fuming with him, detectives, but everyone was fuming with him. And I'm just a little woman, so, you know, I couldn't have done anything about it. But those two men, well, men are strong, aren't they? And they can keep their tempers like us women, so. Anyway, detectives, uh, maybe you want to talk to Getcha about who his real father is. That's all I'm saying. I just need to go check my livers. I mean my organs, I mean something else under my bench. I'll teach you. I'll teach you to, to mess with me, mess with my girl. It's Getcha's girl, not yours, Albert. Oh, um, hi, detective, sorry. I, I was just coming out of the tunnel. Um, how, how can I help? What were you saying about Getcha's girl? Um, well, I, I have my good friend Penelope, um, Penelope Gwynn, and, um, well, she doesn't know it, but we're in love, and Albert Ross has been being very mean to her on the expedition, and I must protect her. Why, what's he, what do you mean, he's, how would you protect her then? Well, Albert Ross keeps going into her lab, and he, he, he sometimes sidles up to her, and I just think it is disgusting. The only person who is sidling up to Penelope is me. So... Can you interact with cod liver oil? Well, no. Uh, Doug deals with the cod liver oil. Uh, the, the only thing that I deal with livers is the seal livers. I take the seal livers from... Uh, from Doug, he takes the seal livers, I take them, and then I give them to Penn in the lab. But, yes, they don't mix. Seal livers are very poisonous. Do you think you're Albert Ross's son? Well, I don't know who my daddy is. I was raised by my uncle, Uncle Overbearings, back in Norway, you see. I never knew my father, but I have always looked up to Albert admired him, wanted to take his place, you know. I, I just don't like the way that he does things with Penelope. I'm going back in my hole! <laughs> well, 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 there we have it. Oh, just walked through my chair. It's got a hole in the back. Uh, yes, well, there we are, detectives. Excellent detecting work. Congratulations on your excellent questions. Now, I'm sure you have an idea of who you think done it and why. So I'll waste no time in asking the head detective from breakout room one to come and share your theories. There you are. You can even sit in my captain's chair. Tell your theories, hey? Lucky you. Oh, hello. Uh, yes, well, um, oh, this is weird. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, the detective from Breakout Room 1. And, um, well, yeah, like it says here, uh, I think Penn did it. Um, so I reckon that, well, we all talked about it and we figured that Penn was the person who killed 
get to, I mean, uh, who killed Albert Ross. And we think that she was madly, deeply, truly in love with him. That's right. She was completely in love with him. And um, we think that he had uh, rejected her advances, which made her absolutely furious. Um, she was so angry that she decided that she would um, have to try to kill him some way. So she started with um, getting the cod liver oil. And um, we think she was actually giving him a massage with the cod liver oil. She kept massaging this, this like poisonous seal liver oil into him. So he thought he was having a pleasurable massage and actually she was slowly poisoning him. But then she uh, basically, we think that um, she killed him when he was in the radio tower. Um, we think we're not sure what she strangled him with, though. So that's the only thing we don't really understand. So maybe she used her hands because we can't think what the weapon was. Um, that's anyway, that's what we think. Right. You think that I was in love with him, did you? All right, well, I don't know where you got that from, detectives, but a fine theory, I'll admit. But I wasn't the one who killed him. Of course I wasn't. Detective from Breakout Room 2, have you been paying more attention? Who do you think done it? Um, yes, I have been paying more attention. Um, see, we in Breakout Room 2, we basically believe that it was uh, Doug's body who did it. That's right. We think Doug's body is the criminal. Um, we think that Doug uh, was really jealous of the way that Albert was getting recognition for everything. He was so jealous that it made him really, really upset and really, really angry. And we actually don't think that Albert Ross was killed in the broadcast tower. We think that Doug uh, killed him when he was in the kitchen. Um, we think that Doug used his tea towel to wrap it around Albert's neck and strangled him until he was dead. And then, because uh, Doug is quite strong, he dragged Albert Ross all the way to the broadcast tower and um, left the body there. And then he put on Albert Ross's coat and limped his way back to the camp and pretended to be Albert Ross. That's how we think he killed Albert Ross. Uh, right, uh, detectives, that is the biggest load of hokum I have heard since I hit Ross doing karaoke in Port. I would never kill my best friend, even though, uh, you know, completely being his truck, you know, going away with his wife. I want to hear from detective number three very, very much. Uh, hello, I'm detective number three, um, and from the breakout room three, uh, the final breakout room, and um, I actually think that it was a conspiracy. So I, we believe that it was uh, Getcha Bearings who had the initial idea for the crime, and we think that he and Penn are in love with each other. And they would spend all their time together making sweet eyes at each other and lots of sweet love. And then uh, they found out that they were in fact related and their brother and sister. Uh, and that Albert Ross was their father. And this really angered them uh, that he had lied to them. So um, they decided to kill him. So um, Getcha was the one who was doing the poisoning he was poisoning Albert with the seal liver, and then um, Penn was actually the one who had the idea to strangle him on the final day. So in the radio tower, uh, she went to follow Albert Ross and she strangled him there. And um, then Getcha was the one who found the body and uh, they thought people would suspect him, even though it's clear he's not strong enough to kill him. So that's, that's what we think happened. Right. Well done, detective. Well, you were partly there, weren't you? Yes, you're right. I was the one that strangled him, but I wasn't working with Getcha. 
nice little film you made yourself there, nice little narrative about us being in love. But I'll tell you the actual way that it happened. Yes, come with me to my lab about six months ago when I discovered that Albert was trying to make passes at me. And then I told him who I really was, his daughter. But he just ignored me and he carried on stealing my research and claiming it as his own. Well, when I found out that he was also stealing my mother's research and claiming it as his own, when she tried to stand up for him, she just, he just ignored her and, and disowned her even though he knew she was pregnant. Well, that's when I started to poison him, detectives. Not getcha, but me. I took the seal lovers and I put them in the cod liver oil. <laughs> Clueless Doug and Bella thought they were giving it to him to make him better. But they were just slowly killing him. It was quite fun, detectives, watching him lose his mind, his wife, his legacy as a hero. But it was taking far too long. So then this morning, when he said he was going to cancel the help, leaving us all starving to death, well, it was a perfect time to finish him off, wasn't it, detectives? So I followed him to the radio tower. And I arrived. I crept up behind him and I strangled him with my binocular strap. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't much life left in him, detective, so it didn't take long. Yeah. Then I took his coat, I adopted his limp, and I limped back to the expedition base camp. Then I shouted for Getcha as Albert Ross. Getcha! Uh, come to the radio tower, there's something wrong with the radio. I did this so Getcha would follow me, thinking I was Albert Ross, so that he would arrive at the crime scene with a dead body and everyone would think it was him. But when I snuck back to the radio tower, I crept back down the tunnel, and then I tossed the tunnel keys onto the map room floor to cast some suspicion on poor, sad, useless Getcha. <laughs> And I would have got away with it if it wasn't for you, Detective Booze Cruz. No, no, my sweet Penny, Penny Wendy, Penelope Penelope. Why would you do such a thing? Well, 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 well. There we are, detectives. There we are. Well done. Each and every one of you helped us catch our killer. Now shake my hand. Shake it, shake my hand. That's it, very good. Goodness me, you've got absolutely enormous hands. Stop touching my bottom. Goodness me, man. There we are. Now off you go. That's it, fade away. Lovely. Well done, detectives. Congratulations. Now, let's get back to our booze cruise. Which one of you had the sherry? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for joining us for that uh, uh, little experiment and test. If you've got any thoughts or any feedback, please do email um, Sharp Teeth Theatre or uh, if Chloe, if you have that contact. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. Um, and also, if you want to know more about Telepresence stage, I'm just going to share the web link in the chat for you to read more. So you can read more about what they've been doing, both with us and with seven other theatre companies. Um, but for now, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.